As a dependency injection framework, Zenject's job is to map instances of objects to the classes that depend on them. But how do we tell Zenject which classes need what? In this video, we'll be taking a look at the different types of injections available in Zenject. Most of the classes you write will need to interact with other objects in order to function. These objects are known as a class's dependencies. A dependency is any object that a class requires in order to execute its code. If this weapon class needs an instance of a bullet factory in order to run, then we can say that the bullet factory is a dependency of the weapon class. One way to fill this dependency is to have some other class give weapon an instance of bullet factory. This is known as an injection. An injection is the passing of a dependency to a dependent object. Injection is a key part of DI because, well, one, it's in the name, but also because a fundamental requirement of the pattern is that classes should not be responsible for locating or creating their own dependencies. That responsibility should belong to somebody else, which in our case is Zenject. We'll cover how Zenject creates and locates dependencies, but first, let's talk about how Zenject knows which dependencies to inject where. Zenject provides four types of injections or injection patterns. Constructor injection, field injection, property injection, and method injection. Constructor injection uses a class's constructor to figure out which objects need to be injected. This is the preferable method of injection because it makes all of your class's dependencies visible at a glance and removes any doubt about when they'll be filled. It also allows you to make use of the read-only property to ensure that your dependencies can't be changed during runtime. Lastly, it keeps your code DI container agnostic, giving you the option to switch DI frameworks or remove DI from your project altogether very easily. Field injection uses fields marked with the inject attribute to figure out which objects need to be injected. Both public and private fields are supported and the injection occurs immediately after the constructor is called. Similarly, Property injection uses c -sharp properties marked with the inject attribute to figure out which objects need to be injected. This pattern also supports public and private setters. Both field and property injections should be used with caution because they make it difficult to analyze a class's dependencies at a glance and to track down when and from where they were filled. Last but not least is an injection pattern that you'll likely become very familiar with. Method injection uses methods marked with the inject attribute to fill a class's dependencies. It's an important injection pattern for Unity because mono behaviors don't support the use of constructors. By creating injection methods, you can set all of your mono behaviors dependencies in one centralized location, with or without a DI framework. Method injection also shares many of the benefits provided by constructor injection, such as being able to identify a class's dependencies at a glance. Another benefit that both constructor and method injections share is that they make it obvious when one of your classes is violating the single responsibility principle. The single responsibility principle states that each class should be responsible for only one piece of functionality. A class with too many constructor arguments is likely breaking this principle and should be split into multiple classes. Each injection pattern has its own set of trade-offs. Learning how they work and gaining experience using each type will help you weigh those trade-offs in scenarios where the best option might not be so obvious. The Ninject Frameworks Wiki has a great write-up about injection patterns that I highly recommend for further reading. Link in the description. Now we have a better idea of how to tell Zenject which objects it needs to create to fill each dependency in our application. This video is part of a series of videos that I'm doing on Zenject. In the next video, we'll learn how to create bind commands that tell Zenject how to actually create our application's dependencies when it's time to make the injections. To join the conversation about Zenject or any other programming topics related to Unity or game development, feel free to join the Infallible Code public Discord server. Link in the description.